All right, in the second part of the video, we're going to wrap up these definitions. So we were just talking about descriptive statistics is merely where you take the data and you try to break it down into a table or a graph or some numerical descriptive statistics like means or medians or modes, or there are a lot of other descriptive statistics that we'll get to. The other two main branches of statistics courses and the study of statistics are probability and statistical inference. Now probability goes from everything having to do with games of chance, the probability of winning the lottery, the, it's basically the study of randomness. And why do we study randomness? Well, the main reason is because we have to be able to understand the relationship between how the answers, how the descriptive statistics we get from a sample relate to what the descriptive statistics of the population are likely to be. And that word likely ties in this idea of probability. So it's a way of studying how statistics and parameters are related to each other. So we're going to do a lot of probability later on but the the main reason for studying probability is so that when we get to the part talking about statistical inference that is using a sample to make a statement about what's likely going on in the entire population you'll see how probability is important now let me just give a quick uh, example of statistical inference so Descriptive statistics is when you take your data and you just calculate, for example, in this study, we might calculate that 43% of people approve of President Obama. That 43%, if we're talking about the sample, 43% of our sample supported President Obama, that's descriptive statistics. However, when we take that next step and say, well, that must mean that 43% or somewhere near 43% of people, of all people in the United States approve of the job that President Obama is doing. Now explicitly when this is a, a site a, from Gallup.com, Gallup polling organization, and we can see here a steady downward trend in the approval rating of President Obama let me show you where at the end of this survey they explicitly talk about the inferential statistics. They tell us about their survey methods and they had a random sample of 3,571 adults aged 18 and older living in 50 states and Washington DC. And they tell us this is really where the probability comes in and the inferential statistics. For results based on the total sample of adults, one can say with 95% confidence, or there's a 95% probability, that the maximum margin of sampling error is plus or minus 2 percentage points. What that tells us is when we look at this 43%, there's a 95% chance that everyone in the population that's 18 and older, that the true parameter is somewhere within 2 percentage points of this sample statistic of 43%. But again, we'll get to that in more detail later in the course. Now let's talk about some different types of variables we might want to collect. Uh, two basic categories are categorical, where you're just putting somebody in a box based on a category or a type, and quantitative data. So sometimes people will call categorical data qualitative versus quantitative. How can you tell the difference? Well, quantitative always has to be a number, so it's always numerical, but also quantitative data has to be the answer to a question, how much or how many of something? How much or how many? Qual qualitative or categorical, it might be a number or it might be a word, but if it's a number, the number is standing in for a word. It's like a code, like a zip code. A zip code isn't quantitative data. It just tells us an idea of where someone lives, a postal code, for example. Um, let's look at the two different types of categorical data we have. 
nominal data is just a name. It comes from N-O-M in French. Uh, nominal just means that's just a label you stick on something. Ordinal, it's like nominal data, but it has a specific order. Now, some quick examples. A quantitative variable, an example, would be drink size if you're measuring it in ounces or liters. That's quantitative. But drink size, if you're ordering a small, medium, large, or extra large, that would be an example of categorical data, but it's also ordinal. Ordinal because there's a specific order that these answers make sense that have to be ordered from small to extra large. Uh, color, red, blue, green, for example, that is qualitative or categorical, but the subtype, it's not ordinal. There's no obvious order to those colors that everyone would accept. And so this is just going to be nominal data. Race, like uh, Caucasian, Asian, Hispanic, etc., those races would also be nominal because there's no obvious order to them. Same thing with gender, male and female. Professor ratings at the end of a course, poor, fair, good, excellent. That's ordinal because there is a definite order that those answers would go in. Now what about type of car? Compact, small, mid-size, large. Well, those four examples right there could be ordinal because you can see where they go from order from smallest to largest. However, if we were to change this list and add something like um, convertible, if those were our five possibilities, I would say that's not ordinal anymore because where does convertible go in that list? We could argue about it. It's not obvious. So that would become nominal. So you see how some of these things can, can be a little tricky. Now, if we go back and look at quantitative data, there are also two types of data that are quantitative. And let me break it down on this sheet right here. Quantitative data, it's always a number. And it's either going to be ratio data or interval data. Now, ratio data, it's, this is most quantitative data is going to be ratio data. The way to tell is it has to pass two tests. The first test is that your data has to have a true zero. That means zero means nothing. Zero means the absence of anything. Another test for ratio data is that twice the number really means two times something. It really means twice as much or twice as many things. Otherwise, it's going to be interval data. Let's look at some examples of interval data. IQ is interval data. It's a man-made scale where there's no such thing as a zero IQ. You may think so, but really if you get below 55 or below 50 on an IQ scale, that means that you have trouble tying your shoes and feeding yourself. So zero really doesn't make sense. Also, if you have uh, an average IQ is around 100, if you take that 55 and you double it, what does it mean twice of? It doesn't really mean twice anything. Same thing with SAT scores in the United States, a minimum of 200. So there's no true zero. The minimum is 200. That's if you answer no questions correctly on the test. What if you doubled that and got 400? Well, 400 is not a great score. It's not a really horrible score, but it's, not, it's really not very good. But what, what does it really mean in relation to the 200, getting no questions right? Well, two times no questions right is still no questions right. So if you double a 200 on the SAT, it doesn't mean twice anything. Similarly with degrees Celsius, there is a zero degrees Celsius. That is the temperature at which water freezes. Um, but it's not absolutely no, no heat or no temperature. Um, so degrees Celsius is interval. There is a temperature scale that is ratio, but that is uh, degrees Kelvin. So degrees Kelvin would be ratio because absolute zero on degrees Kelvin means there's no heat. Atoms stop moving at that point. Shoe sizes, also, uh, for adult men in the United States at least, a zero shoe size does not mean uh, that your foot is zero length. 
it's actually uh, about a five or for about a five or six inch foot um, shoe size. So zero doesn't really mean nothing or zero. However, most numbers, most quantitative data, are going to be ratio data. Income zero means zero. You make no money. And if you double an income, say from ten thousand to twenty thousand, you really have twice as much money. Number of students in a class. Uh, if I have zero students in a class, that really means zero. It really means nothing. But if I go from 10 to 20 students, I really have twice as many students. So this is ratio data. Uh, the amount of water in a glass. You can have zero ounces of water. It really means nothing. So this is ratio data. And if I go from two to four ounces, it really does mean that I have twice as much. It really means twice as much data. And so most things you can think of are inter interval data. Ratio, uh, sorry, are ratio data. Most things are ratio data. Interval are really these man-made exceptions to the rule for the most part. So last little definition is just a sample survey, which I think you understand what that definition means anyway. It's just a survey used to collect data on a sample. And so in the next video, we're going to look at descriptive statistics. We're going to start looking at, if I have a lot of data, how do I make tables, graphs, and numerical summaries of this data? And we're also going to look at some tips and tricks about how to do this in Excel.